Tomorrow, a vote on the plan created to help close the budget deficit. My next guest will cast one of those 18 votes. He is voting yes, but if the fiscal belt tightens, could his own state be the one really feeling the pinch? Joining me now from Capitol Hill is senior senator from North Dakota, Ked Conrad, also the chairman of the Budget Committee. Welcome, Senator. Thank you for coming on Countdown. Good to be with you, Liz. All right, uh, Senator, first I've got to do what Rich, I'm sure you were just listening, what Rich Edson was talking about, whether we will see any movement on the tax cuts or at least extending them, sunsetting them. What is it? Do you have a guess at the moment? Yeah, look, I think uh, tax cuts are going to be extended. I don't know precisely at what level, but I think the vast majority of tax cuts are going to be extended, certainly for the middle class and probably beyond that. And the real question is, are we then going to do fundamental tax reform? Because mm -hmm. that's what the circumstance cries out for. We have a tax system that really uh, has, has got to be fundamentally changed to improve the competitive position of the United States. And yes, to, to develop some more revenue so we can, along with spending cuts, reduce our deficit and get our debt under control. That is critically important for the country. If that sticking point remains, that those above the $250,000 income level is there, uh, would you be willing at least, or at least convince some of your Democratic brethren to say, let's just go for that at least for a year and see the extension of all tax cuts? You know, um, I don't know my ability to persuade others. You, you know, my position has been clear for weeks on what I see as the best course. I've called repeatedly for extension of tax cuts and then going to fundamental tax reform. Yes. You know, we have a tax system that is so badly out of date, so chock-a-block with exclusions, deferrals, uh, and loopholes that we have a, a tax system that's too complex and really has hurt the competitive position of the United States. So, hey, let's face up to it. Let's do what we all know needs to be done and uh, also adopt a deficit reduction package which the commission has come forward with. And we saw that. We have been talking about it since we saw that package. There's some brave recommendations within that. Now, tomorrow's the vote. You need 14 out of the 18 people on this thing to vote for yes. You, Senator Gregg, have said they would vote for it. David Cody of Honeywell, who was on with us yesterday, said he would vote for it. So far, seven yeses. Have you heard in the past couple of hours of anybody else who would join the yes side? Yeah, I'm delighted that Senator Coburn of Oklahoma, Republican, Senator Crapo, Republican of Idaho, have announced this morning they will also support the report, two of the most conservative members of the United States Senate. So now we're at nine out of the 18 have announced in favor, only two against. Um, I think we're going to see some more announce that they're in favor. I don't think we're going to get to 14. But look, if we get a majority of this commission mm -hmm. in favor of this plan, I think that's going to send a very powerful message here in Washington and across the country. Well, here, here's a powerful message. You're leading by example, Senator. Uh, look, it would obviously hurt the state of North Dakota to implement some of the things that have been suggested here that you are still saying yes to because the state of North Dakota gets something like 41 percent as I understand it as we looked at this about 41 percent from all kinds of programs the federal funds account for 41 percent that of, of what you guys get you know you would be hurt if some of that were cut and certainly from the agricultural standpoint where agricultural programs are suggested to be cut by 10 billion dollars from 2012 to 2020 yet you still say yes um, You've got the resolve. Yet yesterday we talked to Representative Marsha Blackburn, who's a Republican from Tennessee. She said, I won't vote for it at all because there are some tax hikes. How are you going to get the rest of Congress to go along with this and say we should all feel a little bit of pain? Liz, there really is no alternative. Here we are. We're borrowing 40 cents of every dollar we spend. Spending as a share of our national income is the highest it's been in 60 Senator, years. Senator, can I ask you to hold the, on one second? Senator Harry yeah. Reid is making a statement, so stand by, and we will listen to him and have you comment on it. Here's Senator Harry Reid, the House Major Senate Majority Leader. Question. Senator Con Kent Conrad, I bring you back on that. What does that do? I'm watching the markets right now. We're pretty much holding steady up 100 points for the Dow. Uh, Liz, uh, as I said before, clearly tax cuts for the middle class, which in terms of the economy are the single most important thing to do, are going to be extended. There's going to be a way found to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I personally suspect that at the end of the day, 
all the tax cuts are going to be extended for some period of time. Uh, and then, hopefully, we're going to move to fundamental tax reform because that's what the, the country really needs as part of an overall deficit reduction package. Uh, look, we are in a circumstance, as I was describing earlier, where spending is the highest it's been in 60 years as a share of our national income. Revenue is the lowest it's been in 60 years as a share of our national income. So we got to work both sides of the equation to get our deficits and debt under control. If we do that, I believe America is going to be poised for a tremendous economic rebound. And within this plan, it's important to stress, you had capital gains to be taxed at ordinary income rates, corporate tax rates under one bracket versus a whole bunch of others. So that would be about 28 percent. Yet again, you were able to get both Democrats and Republicans, at least among the nine who have so far said yes to go along with this. What, do you, what is your gut feeling about your, your vote tomorrow? You just said on our air that you didn't think that we'd get the 14, but that it would certainly send a message. At what point do Americans have to really kind of wake up and understand that, again, as I said before, it's got to hurt everybody and that it will be sort of an amalgam of both serious cuts in spending, but also some tinkering when it comes to taxes? You know, the, uh, let me just say on the, on the revenue side, what is proposed is to reduce significantly the number of deductions, exclusions, loopholes in exchange for much lower rates for everyone. Uh, most economists say that would help with economic growth, would certainly help the economic competitive position of the United States. The top corporate rate would be lowered from 35 percent to 28 percent. That would help our competitive position in the world. That would help with job creation. But also, we're cutting spending in a very significant way uh, to get this deficit and debt under control. It's absolutely, Liz, got to be done. Uh, we are borrowing 40 cents of every dollar we spend. So it's time to face up to it. We can do it. I think we're going to get a majority of this commission to support these proposals. And I think that will serve as a plan going forward, really as an example for the rest of Congress and for the administration of what can be done. Well, thank you for the hard work on all of that. Uh, and we'll be watching this so closely, Senator. We appreciate you coming on. You bet. Good to see you. Good to